Hello everyone, this is K Manju Bhargavi from third year of ECE department. In this video, I am going to give a brief introduction about divide and conquer approach to computation of DFT with an example. What is meant by divide and conquer approach? This approach is based on the decomposition of an endpoint DFT into successively smaller DFTs. As we all know, we can find the DFT of the given input signal by using some other methods like coefficient matrix and all. Then why do we have to choose divide and conquer approach rather than those methods? What is the advantage of using divide and conquer approach method? The advantage is that we can reduce the number of computations like additions and multiplications required for finding the DFT by using this method. For example, if the number of multiplications required for finding the DFT using coefficient matrix method and all is around 1000, then the number of multiplications required for finding the DFT using divide and conquer approach is less than 1000. It may be around 600 or 500 based on the value of capital N. So this is the advantage of divide and conquer approach. This approach can be achieved in two ways. The first way is by considering the input signal as row-wise and the second way is by considering the input signal as column-wise. If we consider the input signal as row-wise, the resulting transformation signal should be considered as column-wise. If we consider the input signal as column-wise, then the resulting transformation signal should be considered as row-wise. Before getting into an example, let us have a look at the equations that we have to use for finding the DFT using divide and conquer approach. Here, as you can see, the small x of n is the given input signal which is in the form of one dimensional array. And we have to represent this small x of n in the form of two dimensional array, nothing but like a matrix, small x of l comma n. Here, the DFT equation is given. Here, the capital X of p comma q represent the desired resulting transformation signal, which is represented in the form of two dimensional array. And here, you can see small x of l comma m, which is the given input signal. And you can see the terms wmmq, wllp, wnmp. These terms are nothing but the Tweedle factors. Here you can see the value of W and MP is e power minus j 2 pi MP divided by capital N. If, if you consider W L L P, then it will be e power minus j 2 pi small l into small p divided by capital L. This is called as Tweedle factor. Here the capital L represents the number of rows in the two-dimensional representation of small x of n and the capital M represents the number of columns. Now let us see the steps required for finding the DFT of the given input signal using divide and conquer approach. The first step is to store the signal row wise. As I have already said, if we consider the input signal as row wise, then the resulting transformation signal should be considered as column wise. In this video, I am considering the input signal as row wise. So the output transformation signal should be considered as column wise. The second step is to compute the L point DFT at each column. The L point DFT equation is given by it is given as capital F of P comma M is equals to sigma L is equals to 0 to capital L minus 1 X of L comma M W L L P. Here the P value ranges from 0 to L minus 1. For each column indicates for M is equals to 0, 1, 2 and so on up to capital M minus 1. The resulting array which is obtained after computation of second step is considered as capital F of P comma M. The third step is to multiply the resulting array which is obtained in the previous step by the factors W and P M. Here, the p value ranges from 0 to capital L minus 1 and small m value ranges from 0 to capital M minus 1. And you can see the equation capital G of p comma m is equals to capital F of p comma m w n p m. And the next step is to compute the m point DFT of each row. The m point DFT is given as sigma m is equals to 0 to capital M minus 1 capital G of p comma m w m m p where m lies from 0 to capital M minus 1. Here, for each row indicates for p values of 0, 1 and so on up to capital L minus 1. The resulting array is nothing but the required transformation signal which is represented in the form of two-dimensional array capital X of P comma M. And the next step is to read the resulting array column wise. As I have already said, if we consider input signal as row wise, then the resulting transformation signal should be considered as. Now let us see an example like a basic example without considering any values. Here I am considering a 15 point DFT, which means I have to find out the DFT for a sequence which contains 15 elements. Let's see the solution. Given n is equals to 15. In divide and conquer approach, we have to represent n in the form l into m. 15 can be represented as 5 into 3. So here we are considering 5 as l and m as 3. So it contains 5 number of rows and 3 number of columns. And the next step is to represent x of n in two-dimensional array form. As you all can see here, there are 5 number of rows and 3 number of columns. And we are representing x of l comma m as it is from row 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and it's from column 0, 1, 2. So we are representing the element x of 0, 0, which indicates it belongs to 0th row and 0th column. And the next element x of 0, 1, which belongs to 0th row and 1st column. In this way, we have to represent. And the next step 
is 2. So x of n no wise. As we haven't taken any values, we are considering a basic example. As we all know, as it is a 15 point DFT, so the x of n contains 15 elements. So I'm considering those elements as x of 0, x of 1, and so on up to x of 14. The x of 0 is the first element in the sequence, and the x of 1 is the second element in the sequence, and so on up to x of 14. St store x of n row wise. Storing x of n row wise means here in first row, we are taking x of 0, and we are not going to the second row and keeping x of 1. Instead, we are completing the first row and then we are going for the next row. As you can see here, we have taken x of 0 here and x of 1, x of 2. Once the row is completed, then we are going for the next row, x of 3, x of 4, x of 5, and so on up to x of 14. This is termed as storing x of n row wise. And the next step is to compute the L point DFT at each column. In the example that we have taken, the L is 5. So we have to calculate the 5 point DFT for each of the three columns as M value is 3. After finding the L point DFT for each column, the append matrix is termed as capital F of P, comma M, which is a 5 by 3 matrix. And you can see this is the resulting array after completing the step 2. And the next step is to multiply the resulting array, which is obtained in the previous step, by the factors W and MP. And the resulting array is this, which is considered as capital G of P, comma M, which is also a 5 by 3 matrix. And the next step is to calculate the M point DFT of each row. Here, the value of M is 3 and the value of L is 5. So we have to calculate the 3 point DFT for each of the 5 rows. After this computation, we will get the desired transformation signal, which is a DFT signal, capital X of P, comma Q, which is represented in two dimensional array form. And the next step is to read the resulting array column wise. As you can see here, this is the obtained transformation signal matrix. Here, we are considering the first element as capital X of 0. And the capital X of 1, which is the second element in the sequence of DFT, we are taking it in the next row, capital X of 1. And the, in the next row, capital X of 2, capital X of 3, capital X of 4. Once the column is completed, then we are going for the other column, capital X of 5, capital X of 6, and so on, up to capital X of 14. This is called as storing capital X of K column wise. So this is the required transformation signal matrix representing input data and resulting DFT in terms of one-dimensional arrays. This is the two-dimensional form of the given input signal, which is considered as row wise, x of 0, x of 1, x of 2, and again to the next row, and so on up to x of 14. This is we have seen. And this is the uptrend resulting transformation signal, capital X of K, capital X of 0, capital X of 1, 2, 3, which is stored as column wise. Here, you can see the difference between considering it as row wise and considering it as column wise. What is the difference? You can see easily. If we take the input sequence and output sequence, has for the first element, like x of 0, 0, the input sequence is x of 0. For capital X of 0, 0 also, it is capital X of 0. When we consider the small x of 0, 1, in the place of 0, 0 and first column, the input se signal is having the term small x of 1, whereas the resulting transformation signal has the value capital X of 5. And so on, if we can see, we can find the difference between these two matrices. So here I'm considering the output array sequence in the normal form, capital X of 0, capital X of 1, capital X of 2, capital X of 3, and so on, up to capital X of 40. Here you can see, for this position, capital X of 0, the input is also small x of 0. You can see, for capital X of 0, in this input array sequence, the first element is small x of 0. And next, here, we are taking as capital X of 1, which is in the position of first row and zeroth column. In the same position, in the input two-dimensional two form matrix, we have small x of 3, which is considered here. And in the next position, x of 2, 0, here we have capital X of 2, whereas in this matrix, we have small x of 6, which is taken here, small x of 6 and capital X of 2. In this way, we have to consider the sequence. This is the input array sequence and this is the output array sequence. Up to now, we have considered a basic example without any values. Let's see a small question and how we have to find the solution for this question. Here, given small x of n contains four elements, 2, 3, 2, 1, and a new sequence y of 1, which is termed as containing x of n two times, calculate dft for y of n using divide and conquer approach. Let's see the solution for this question. Here, given x of n is 2, 3, 2, 1, which contains four elements, and y of n is given as x of n and x of n, which contains x of n two times. As x of n contains four elements, y of n contains eight elements, which is defined as this. 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. It contains eight elements. 
So it is a A point DFT. As I have already said, we have to consider the sequence as the first element 2 is considered as y of 0, 3 is considered as y of n, 2 is considered as y of 2, and so on up to the last element 1 is considered as y of 7. Let's see the first step. Here, divide and conquer approach, as we all we have already discussed in the previous example. And n should be represented in the form of L into m. Here, n value is 8, and 8 can be written as 4 into 2. So there are 4 number of rows and 2 number of columns. And the next step is to represent y of n in two dimensional array and storing the input data sequence row wise. As you all can see, there are four number of rows and two columns, y of 0, 0, which indicates that it belongs to 0th row and 0th column, y of 1, 0, it belongs to 0th column and first row. Here, we have to consider x of n as row wise. So, y of 0, y of 1, y of 2, y of 3, y of 4, y of 5, y of 6, y of 7. Once the row is completed, and then we have to go over the next row. As you can see, this is the sequence given sequence of y of n, which contains eight elements. As we have already seen, two is considered as y of zero, three is considered as y of one, and so on up to. So by keeping these values in the in these places, we'll get this matrix. Y of zero is two, y of one is three, y of two is two, y of three is one, y of four is two, y of five is three, y of six is two, y of seven is one. As it contains four rows and two columns, it is a four by two matrix. And the next step is to calculate the L point DFT for each column. As here in this example, the value of L is 4. So we have to calculate the 4 point DFT for M is equal to 0 and 1. And the equation is capital F of P comma M is equal to sigma. L is equal to 0 to 3. Y of L comma M, W4 LP. Where M take the values from 0 to 1 and P take the values from 0 to 3. Once we compute this, the resulting matrix obtained is this. And the next step is to multiply the resulting array, which is obtained in the previous step, by the factors W and P. Here, the value of capital N is 8, so we are considering taking it as 8. Once we compute this, we will obtain this matrix. I have already said about W8 PM, it is a trivial factor, which can be calculated as e power minus J2 by PM divided by 8. And here, the value of P is from 0 to 3, and M takes the values from 0 to 1. This is the obtained matrix after computing this. And the next step is to compute 2 point DFT for L is equals to 0, 1, 2, 3. And the equation for calculating 2 point DFT is this, where small m takes the values from 0 to capital M minus 1. Here, as the capital M is 2, so it takes from 0 to 1. And P takes the values from 0 to capital L minus 1. As capital L is 4, it takes values 0, 1, 2, 3. Once, if we compute this, the resulting transformation signal matrix in two-dimensional form is obtained which is 16, 0, 0, 0, minus 4j, 4j, 0, 0. And the last step is to consider this matrix column-wise. As I have already discussed, for column-wise representation, we have considered the first column first. Once the column is completed, then we have to go for the next column. As the resulting DFT transformation signal contains a sequence y of 0, y of 1, y of 2, and so on up to y of 7. So we have to complete the first column, y of 0, y of 1, y of 2, y of 3, y of 4, y of 5, y of 6, y of 7. If we compare the sequence, input array sequence and the output array sequence, this is the given input sequence which contains 8 elements, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 1. And the resulting transformation signal is this. As you can see, the first element in the sequence is y of 0. The value of y of 0 is 16. So 16 is in the first place. And the next value in the sequence is y of 1, which is 0. So the next element in the sequence is 0. In this way, we have to take the sequence of the resulting transformation signal. Like 16, 0, minus 4j, 0, 0, 0, 4. All the content that I have shared here is taken from the book Digital Signal Processing by Kuraajis. This is the reference that I have used. I hope you all got a brief idea about divide and conquer approach and how to compute the DFT of 